Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Jeanette Spittle. I'm the coordinator of the um, Environment and Biodiversity section at the City of Greater Geelong. I'm part of the Environment Unit um, and my team's responsible for looking after coastal reserves, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, I was just reflecting during the presentation that it's interesting that the coast, apart from the waterfront in the city, at, in the City of Greater Geelong, the team that's responsible for managing the coast and large sections of the bay is the Environment Unit. It's not managed through our Sport and Recreation Department, which I think just indicates how seriously the City of Greater Geelong takes its responsibility about managing the environmental assets on the coast. So it's just... Um, now, um, one thing that I, I just wanted to, to speak about briefly, and my colleague um, Steve Smitherman wrote these points, but I think that you'll find them quite interesting, is that the City of Greater Geelong is a growth municipality. So it's almost officially been called that. As you'd be aware, there's growth pods all over the place. There's Warralilly. There's a lot of growth happening around Ocean Grove. There's growth happening down at Clifton Springs. So we're not getting any more or very little more environment space. We are gaining some. But the places that are there are now subject to a lot more pressures than they were in the past, simply because there's so many more people around. So Steve uh, just asked me to have you consider these points. So a bit of research. In, 19, in 1838, when the township of Geelong was gazetted, it had a population of just under 500 people. Each of those people had 4,700 square metres of beach space themselves. In 2017, the population of the city of Greater Geelong has grown so that each person will have a little over 10 square metres. And in just under 20 years from now, the population of the city of Greater Geelong is forecast to increase by 34% and each resident will have as little as under eight square metres of beach. So we've gone from being quite a small community to a much bigger community, but the beach environment is pretty much exactly the same. And another thing that I thought was worth reflecting on, um, that if you go around, if you actually have a look at the posters and the aerial photos throughout this space, you will see that the actual environment of the reserve that we look after and the environment space that's left is just a narrow strip along the coast, which is true right throughout the whole of the city of Greater Geelong. There's more in some places and less in others. But mostly we're dealing with an extremely narrow strip of vegetation that has still amazingly lots of environmental values that are left. So pretty much tonight I've been asked just to give you a bit of a snapshot of some of those values. Now many of them mean if you're going to see them, you have to kind of slow down, you have to look, you often have to be quiet, but they're there, but you just have to take your time and observe and be just, just slower in the space and you'll see some of these things. And often they're very well camouflaged as well. So this is um, first of all a map about the coastal management zones. Just to give you an idea, um, well, Gary's already mentioned how much area Barham Coast managed, which is 13 kilometres. So the city of Greater Geelong managed from um, Thompson's Creek, the mouth of Thompson's Creek, through to Black Rock. So that whole area of Brimley is managed by the city of Greater Geelong's environment department, including the Brimley Caravan Park. <laughs> Then um, Barwon Water manage the section at Black Rock. Then Barwon Coast pick up again down to Bonnyvale Road, which is where we come back on board again. So we manage the coast from Bonnyvale Road down to Point Lonsdale, Fellows Road. So we manage all that foreshore along there, which is effectively landlocked, which means that it's kind of a wild place, one of the most wild places left in the city of Greater Geelong, partly because it's pretty well inaccessible unless you walk in it. So that's, and you'll see from this map too, that those red spaces are where the um, hooded plover breed. So they breed in the areas that we're responsible for, and I'll talk a little bit more about them in a moment, but um, down at Brimley, and also this section of coast between Bonnyvale Road and Point Lonsdale, but of course right through Bowen Coast and Bowen Waterland as well. Um, now, this is just an, an illustration that the coast or the beach is a whole lot of different systems of vegetation and types of vegetation. It's a whole ecosystem and the different habitats that exist down there means that there's lots of different species that live down there. So you'll see that if, if you want to go from the sea <coughs> you move into the intertidal area, into the sand dunes, into the four dunes with things like the spinifex grasses, back into sort of lower scrub, into more moon and woodland as you go right to the back. 
So you've got a whole lot of different habitats and within that also you have estuaries, vegetation and estuary environments which are also extremely rich environments for native, for native flora and fauna. So some of the, the, the shorebirds that you'll see if you just take your time, uh, and these are some of the common ones, are obviously the seagull and the heron and the Pacific gull, which is a huge gull that you'll see on the beaches, usually in pairs. You'll see them a lot in the bay, but you also see them along the beaches. If you take your time, you'll see them. They're quite magnificent. Many of you probably know what they look like already. Um, often they're seeking shelter in the evenings and just in a, in a more sheltered place. Um, to overnight. You'll see crows down the beach as well and the uh, white-faced heron as well on the on rocky out in the um, rock pools. Now these are some of the other shorebirds that you may or may not be aware of but which you will also see. This year I've seen um, eight of the sooty oyster catchers which is the birds down here just at the just near Barwon Heads just on a rocky outcrop there just feeding um, when the tide was low they're quite something to see if you've never seen them. They're about sort of this big and they're black and extremely exciting when you do actually see one, especially when you see eight in one hit. Mostly you might just see two. And this is a pied oyster catcher up the top, which is a black and white bird. Then we have um, migratory birds. Um, over here we have a turn and there's various turns on the beach that you'll see. There's crested turns, there's fairy turns. Um, and there's the Caspian Tern, which is a very big tern, which you'll see around Brimley sometimes. Then we've got a red cat plover, which is a tiny little bird that hangs out with the hood of plovers as well, which can be sometimes very hard to, unless you get your eye in, it can be hard to actually tell what the red cat plover, the difference between the hood of plover and the red cat plover. And there's another little plover that hangs around with them too in winter, which is the double banded plover, which flies over from New Zealand. It's a migratory bird. So those, all those little birds hang out together and sometimes it can be extremely hard to actually identify them. But if you get your eye in again, you'll start seeing that there's all sorts of different birds in amongst that little community of birds, often around estuaries. Then we have migratory birds that fly over from the Northern Hemisphere. So we have the rud ruddy turnstone, um, the golden plovers and the redneck stints, which fly over each year to spend summer here and then fly back to the Northern Hemisphere when it's there, but it's their summer over there. So they're coming over here to overwinter. Now, as was discussed already, here's the hooded plover. So there's about 22 of these left in this area. Um, they pair off and they breed each year. They attempt to breed on surf beaches. So they're not found on the bay. They're only found on sandy surf beaches, not cliff beaches. And as was already said last year, um, none in the city of Greater Geelong successfully fledged. So that's working with Bowen Coast, us, the Friends of the Hooded Plover, uh, the Borough of Queenscliff, Bowen Coast are involved as well. So there's a whole community of people helping to look after the Hooded Plover by putting up fences and signs. There's an extensive program of wardens that look after the little bird and the chicks when, they, when they're hatched. With all of that, not um, a single solitary chick um, survived last year. The year before, nine was successfully fledged between here and Lawn, and last year only one between here and Lawn, and that was at Point Impossible, around Point Impossible. So even Surf Coast um, had a bad go of it last year. And these are some of the birds that you'll find in the woodland. So it's not just the, the actual beach where the birds are hanging out. When you get out of the car and you're walking through the moon of woodland and walking through the bush, there's a whole lot of native animals living amongst that community, in that community as well, like robins, um, the Nanking kestrel, which lives in the cliffs that you'll see often hovering and waiting to feed, apartalotes and other little robins. And then, of course, there's the reptiles, the jackie lizard, and there's a little jackie lizard over there that Maddie gave me that are, are lives in the dunes, blue tongue lizards, echidnas, and also the seals. So these are creatures that are found if you take time and you're lucky enough, you'll find them in the coastal reserve between the car parks and the beach. And these are some of the other little creatures and the, the, the creatures in the intertidal area. So there's so much life there and even the trampling of those places can have quite an impact. Just people alone has a big impact on these places. 
Uh, these are some of the, the wildflowers. So there's orchids, there's many orchids that grow at Buckley Park in the area that we look after. Pink fairies and uh, maroon hoods and helmet orchids. And there's also wonderful peas. There's just masses of purple flowers in spring and yellow flowers. They're all wildflowers that are growing in the dunes. So um, yeah, the coast and the beaches are fixed, finite and shrinking, as I've said, and it's unlikely <coughs> that we'll be getting any more surf beach space within the city of Greater Geelong, but it's very likely that the amount of surf space, space per beach goer and for the ecological protection of the coastal bi biodiversity will continue reducing into the future. Um, and that's for a whole lot of reasons, not just the increase in the residents. So we must learn, I think, um, to share our shores. So thank you. I'm available at the table over there after if anyone's got anything to <laughs> say.